This is Alan Ball. Hi, this is Audrey Fisher. This is Jim Perry. Hi, this is Kristen Bauer. Hi, this is Alexander Skarsgård. This is Nelson Ellis. Hi, this is Johnny Neal. This is Rael Tucker. Hi, this is Lindsay Colsifer. Hi, this is Ryan Quantum from True Blood. Hello, this is Steve Alexander. Hey, this is Lauren Bowles. Hi, this is David Tishman. This is Chase Everett. This is James Frame, and you're listening to True Blood Radio. This is Liz. This is Mel. Welcome to True-Blood.net Vodcast, episode 130 for Thursday, April 14th. We've got quite a few news items today, plus an exclusive interview with Jace Everett. And we'll talk a little bit about spoilers later in the show, so stick with us. First up, musical duo David and Divine dropped a new music video last week for their song Till the Sun Comes Up, featuring True Blood's Mariana Clavena, who played Lorena. It's a surrealist take on a love song. It's going to get stuck in your head. It's a... Uh, it's very, very different, but it was a lot of fun to watch, and Mariana is just adorable. She's kind of edgy, but just adorable. And you can find that video at true-blood.net. And Sam Trammell told USMagazine.com that they found out they are expecting twin boys. He says, it's very nerve-wracking, but we're pretty excited. He says, um, I'm most excited about just the lifestyle change, believe it or not, and even though it's going to take, even though it's taking away all of our freedom... And then Missy says it's going to be very different. Yeah. It's going to be just a little bit, a little life-changing. So you crazy kids, have a good time. I'm thinking all those long night shoots on True Blood have gotten him pretty well prepared for fatherhood, especially with twins. Yeah, I would hope so. Mm -hmm. I would hope so. Yeah. So be sure to check out true-blood.net for the complete schedule for Charlene Harris's Dead Reckoning book tour, which begins May 3rd in New York, the day that the book is released. Is she coming to your city? She's coming to both of ours, so we'll be seeing her. And as always, we'll bring you coverage of that. And also, next week, we'll be bringing you our reviews of the new book. I've already read it, and Liz is getting started uh, today, probably. It's really good. Um, those of you that were out on Twitter on Saturday night while I was reading it got a, little, a few little tidbits. Um, I think the most exciting one was that there's a scene in there that kind of, it, it rivals the shower scene in book four. So, you know, you might want to get your fans ready. What shower scene? What? <laughs> Bite your tongue. <laughs> oh, that big tall Viking dude. Yeah, oh, okay. It's pretty hot. Yeah. But, yeah. Woohoo! So, more details coming next week. Also, Barnes & Noble is inviting you to post your burning questions about Dead Reckoning and beyond on Barnes & Noble's Facebook page for Charlene Harris. They're going to gather up all your questions. They're going to record Charlene answering them, and then they're going to post their video on that same Facebook page on May 3rd, which is the release date of the book. So head on over there. The link is at true-blood.net. Check it out. Go on over there and get all your questions piled up there for Charlene. Throw them all at her. Yeah, who knows what they'll pick. Maybe they'll pick yours. Maybe they'll pick that burning question you've been wondering about for the last 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. So New York Magazine grabbed a quick interview with True Blood's Jim Perrick when he was there last week, and he didn't give anything away about True Blood, but he did mention that Chris Bauer has threatened to become buff for season four, which, um, I, you know, let's, let's do it, Chris. <laughs> you can do it. He also talks about his best buddy, uh, James Franco, and how James actually helped Jim turn his life around. Jim says he was just so honest. You know, I was uh, 21, 22, excuse me, uh, I was a young guy, 21 or 22 years old, and that was very, and was very troubled, and he didn't mind saying to me, you've got to get it together, and he wasn't that much older. You can read the entire article at nymag.com. It's a nice little piece with, uh, with Jim Perrick, who, of course, we love. Yeah. True friend will tell it like it is right to your face. That's true. Mm. Buzz Focus nabbed some chat time with True Blood composer Nathan Barr at WonderCon a couple weeks ago. Nate tells us in the, that in the first 10 minutes of the first episode of season four, he uses orchestra, which they've never done on this show before. And he has hopes of being able to repeat that for a couple of episodes throughout the season. He also talks about his favorite character to create a score around and a different sound for the fairies because these fairies are not Tinkerbell. There's not going to be the little, the little chimes and the little tinkling sounds that you usually, you know, associate with fairies. These fairies in True Blood are, yeah, they're not that. Mm-mm. So look for something different, something memorable, something Nate Parr. Oh, yeah. I love what he comes up with. He's so talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, we have several book reviews coming up for you, um, including, uh, we already mentioned, the new Sookie, which goes up next week. And we've already posted our advanced review of the latest book from Leanna Renee Heber in the Strangely Beautiful series. It's the prequel to the two Miss Percy books that have already been uh, released. And you can read our review. Uh, spoiler alert. You loved it. You can read our review and uh, enter to win a copy of your very own at true-blood.net. That will end next Thursday, so you've got plenty of time to enter still. In the meantime, we wanted to remind you, our gorgeous and smart listeners, that Audible is offering a free audiobook download for a free 14-day trial to give you a chance to check out their service. Uh, Audible has all 10 of the Sookie books available, and the Miss Percy books are there, too. They're in audiobook format, and through the special offer, you can get one of them for free. Download your free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash trueblood. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash trueblood, and uh, choose your free audiobook now. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the news section of this week's uh, podcast, so now we're going to roll right into our interview with Jace Everett, who you know as the man who wrote and sings the theme to uh, True Blood, Bad Things. He has a new record on the way, so we talk a little bit about that and about uh, being associated with True Blood and what that's meant for him. So here we go. This is Mel with True Blood Radio, and I'm here with Jace Everett, who uh, most Trubies know as the man who sings bad things at the beginning of every episode of True Blood. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing really great. I understand that you have a new album that's dropping this month. I do. Uh, I'm real excited about it. It should be out here in just a little while, and uh, excited to see what you guys think about it. Unless, of course, it's negative, and then I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about it. What's it, the title? It's called Mr. Good Times, oh. and um, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek, as I'm a miserable, miserable bastard. So, um, no, it's it's uh, it's going to be fun. There's some good, fun, up-tempo stuff on it, but there's also uh, some some darker undercurrents going on, as usual, in my work. So uh, a lot of stuff going on in the record, and I, uh, I'm, I'm very keen to see what people have to say about it. As long as it's good. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's good. I don't yeah. want to hear any criticism. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> yeah, I get that from your songs. You're a delicate flower. <laughs> I am. I am indeed. <laughs> so you're coming off of, you know, the the kind of a rise to fame from the from a song that you wrote several years ago that was chosen to be the theme for True Blood, right? Yeah, it was uh, 2002 when I initially wrote that thing. Yeah. So that had to be pretty exciting when it got chosen. It was, uh, considering that my my career was, you know, in a really rough spot, and I was a uh, Having to having to do things I don't even want to talk about. Honestly, I'm just embarrassed about it. But uh, no, it was it was fantastic. It was a great thing that happened. Alan Ball and it is a great dude, and it's really cool to be associated with him. And the whole show is just a lot of fun. So I'm pulling for 20 seasons. I don't know about everybody else. But that's what I'm we that's are, what I'm hoping for. We're right there with you. Well, we'll start a petition. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Well, Alan seems to have a knack for finding kind of undiscovered talent, you know, people that have been working, you know, in, in their respective craft but haven't really had a lot of attention, and he, he finds them, and then all of a sudden everybody knows about them. Yeah. You know, I think he's just one of those kind of people that has a really good work ethic. He, he does the research. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's so many great actors, writers, musicians, uh, everything out there in the world, you know, journalists, what, much like yourself, you know, and, and uh, you know, there's so many talented people out there, but Alan's one of the people that actually does the work to go out and find them. So God bless him, you know. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Has it given you some additional flexibility or maybe some additional freedom to follow up, you know, having kind of having that as a uh, turning point in your career, are you now able to do some things that you had hoped to do but maybe weren't really viable? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, before I was, I, I put out a mainstream country record back in 2004, and uh, I'm not really a mainstream country artist, but, you know, I, hell, I was trying to make a living, exactly. and I had that opportunity, so I pursued it, mm -hmm. and uh it didn't. It didn't come to fruition. So when this when this came about, it was really cool because I was able to do the exactly the music I want to do, 
and people were, you know, inclined to at least give it a, give it a listen simply because of my affiliation with True Blood. So, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's given me a lot of freedom. How would you describe your sound? Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm afraid <laughs> to. <laughs> um, but you know, it's 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 a very American sound. I think you know, uh, I, I mix up country and rock and roll and blues and mm-hmm. and even some gospel elements. Um, I don't know. We haven't thought of a cool, catchy little phrase. Uh, we'll give ten bucks to the first person that does. Uh, I, I don't know what the heck we're supposed to call it, <laughs> but uh, we just we just call it Jace Everett music. You know what? That could become a new genre. Yes, yeah. because I'm so global. That I'm sure that's <laughs> going to just. I'm sure that's going to happen. But, yeah. but I like I, I like the notion. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, can't you see him on American Idol having the Jay Severett night? Yes. You know, <laughs> nothing would make me happier because I know how much they pay for those licenses. Oh yeah, no kidding. Well, tell us, are you going to be touring in support of this album? I am. I'm going to be uh, hitting Europe first, uh, hitting uh, the UK and Norway and likely Germany uh, in June, mm-hmm. late May and June. And then uh, I may be going down to Australia in August. And then uh, I'll be, you know, doing sporadic dates here in the States, uh, as I always do. You know, it's hard for me to string together a three-week run over here, but uh, it's a big country. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but yeah, we'll all, we'll always be doing dates as as duo as full band as the whole thing. Going to be down in Baton Rouge actually in just a few weeks. Awesome, awesome! I just got back from New Orleans. That is How was a, that? Yeah. Oh, it was fun. It was a fun part of this uh, country. I'd never been before. Oh really? That's no. Vampire Central. Uh, yes, it is. It sure is. And I'm not particularly a vampire fan. I'm a fan of good stories. So, right. you know, so people are like, oh, are you going to take the vampire tour? Mm, no. <laughs> I'm, a, no. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not a complete, I'm not a complete nerd. I'm going to be yeah. okay. Thanks. Yeah, I don't have the fangs or anything, you know. So, have you toured in Europe before? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been, I probably tour Europe. Well, I definitely tour Europe more than I tour the States. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering, since you are just, you're describing your sound as you know American, I was wondering how it was received over there. Uh, they love it. You know, it's it's funny. The European audience is actually uh, uh, really receptive to live music, especially from America. They they <laughs> they love American music, um, so rock and roll, country, blues, jazz. Um, there's always a really really avid audience over there from from. Spain and Portugal all the way up to Norway and, and anywhere in Scandinavia. They just really eat it up, so it's great. That's awesome. It's a fun opportunity to travel and meet fans from all over. Yeah, it's it's really nice. I, I enjoy it a lot. I'm a, I'm a big Europhile. I, I even yeah. lived in France for a while, so I like it. Cool. And as True Blood is spreading around, have you seen a difference between how True Blood fans um, in Europe and True Blood fans in America are reacting? Um, I don't know if I'd, I'd say there's a difference. Uh, the European audience tends to be a little more uh, cynical, if you will. Mm-hmm. I mean, they 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 love it, but they don't want to let you know they love it. You know oh, what I mean? They're too <laughs> cool for school. Kind of, but also the, the, there's an element of that, I'm sure. But they're also just really respectful of oh. the people that are on stage in front of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's it's it goes both ways. But uh, you know, I, I mean, I think they all love the show, and you know, they're, they all bought a ticket to see me play bad things. And of course, I make them wait for about an hour, and then I play it. Evil. I mean like that. <laughs> well, you know, you got got to make them wait for it. I'm down with that. Well, I wouldn't want them to get up and leave. That's just that's a song <laughs> that would just hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was really enjoying the duet you did with C.C. Adcock that's on the second season soundtrack. How did that come about? Oh, um, uh, it was C.C.'s idea. It's funny. People call it a duet. Yeah, he didn't actually sing on it. Um, but so I don't know. Maybe it's a duet. I've heard two or three people call it that. I, I'm not sure. He played he played a guitar solo on it oh. and, and, co- and co-produced it. But uh it was his idea. It was his song. They wanted an old uh, classic tune mm-hmm. uh, for the new season, uh, and they thought of Howlin' Wolf since they were going to introduce 
werewolves into the show. And uh, Gary Calamar talked to Cece, who and they're all buddies, and I'm buddies with Cece. And, and Cece thought it would be a good idea to get me in on it, which was gracious of him. So we went down to New Orleans, actually, mm-hmm. and um, recorded that over a long weekend. Had, had a hell of a good time, man. He's, yeah. he's a funny, funny guy. He is. We had the opportunity to interview him last year when the soundtrack was coming out. And, oh, gosh, his responses just had me in hysterics. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a very, very pretty and very funny man. <laughs> All right. Man, if only I'd known, I could have titled the interview that. Very pretty and very funny. <laughs> yeah. But I look for a woman, except he's a man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Do you find that recording in a certain area um, – influences how you how you uh or or even writing does that make an impact on you in the creative process you mentioned yeah, I, think that you, it does. You I think it does i think i think it does uh i'm such a slow writer you know uh things either come to me in a lightning bolt or i'll work on them for two weeks so it's rare that i stay in one place for that long but but the concepts of geography really influence my writing. You know, if you, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go somewhere and get a feeling, and then come home and write three songs about that feeling. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it definitely, it definitely does. Yeah. Which is, I think is important in this internet world. You know, to actually go out and see the world and be inspired by where you're where you're at. I think is is an important thing for everybody to do. Sure, it makes people. It makes it easier for people around the world to connect with your songs. I think. Yeah, or, or, and, and just for people to connect with themselves, you know. I mean, I think it's I think it's cool to get out of whatever box you live in, mm-hmm. um, in, in my opinion. So get a chance to go watch True Blood in a different city. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, that makes sense. So where's your favorite place to write or record? What's been the most inspirational so far in your career? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. One that I don't have a quick answer for. Um, gosh. I, I loved writing down in Texas mm-hmm. uh, when I was growing up there, just because the the sunsets are amazing. Um, I love when I'm in Dublin. I almost always get a song idea when I'm in Dublin, Ireland. Huh. Um, I almost always get a song idea when I'm in London, England. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know what my what my bestest, favoriteest place is. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I, I have to go through my catalog and say, "Wow, look where all those songs came from." Uh, my well, most successful songs have been written in Nashville, so I shouldn't discount mm-hmm. Nashville. Yeah, well, that does kind of have the quintessential American or Americana feel, I think. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But, wow, Texas, Dublin, and, and London, those are some pretty disparate areas. Yeah, they are. They are. But there's a, a certain uh, swagger to all three of them, I it's guess. That's true. That, that, yes. that gets me excited. Yeah. And there's a certain beer to all three, so I think yeah. that would make a difference, too. Um, Absolutely. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with us, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing this new album, Mr. Good Times. Mr. Good Times, thank you very, very much, and uh, I'm sorry I was late calling you back, so thanks for talking to me. All right. Well, thanks for, for that interview and for taking time with us, Chase. And we're looking forward to some new music, new tunes by you. Something we can hum and sing. Ooh. And that's going to be it for the news section and our interviews for this week's show. We're going to roll into spoilers right now. So if you don't want to be spoiled, don't want to know what's coming up, you want to be totally surprised, shut us down and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. All right. Spoilers. dun da 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 Rossman 7 on IMDb is at it again, bringing us the casting information for True Blood episode 409, titled Run. Written by Brian Buckner and directed by Romeo Tyrone. This episode likely begins filming April 18th here in a couple of days. The show is casting Joyce Watney, a 20-year-old self-satisfied young woman who loves the sound of her own bleeding heart voice. She'll host the Say No to Hate Festival of Tolerance and Media event to join together vampires and humans in common cause. She's proud of founding the Living Dead Student Alliance at her school. True Blood is also looking to cast a male V dealer in his mid-twenties who meets a customer in a seedy alley and warns her against taking too much V. He's disturbed by the customer's appetites. A dealer with a conscience. That's pretty odd. And um, 
we're kind of thinking, as you are, that it's probably Debbie Pelt. Yeah, and that means she's back and she's still psychotic. She's still on the V, and apparently she's so far gone that even her dealer is trying to cut her off. Never a good sign. Yikes. No. Well, in other spoilery news, HBO released their latest teaser video showing Terry walking into the living room of his and Arlene's home and seeing some threatening writing on the wall. Baby, not yours. Yikes! Got me to thinking that maybe Renee has somehow, with that thing that she did with Hallow, with that Arlene and Hallow, that little ritual they went through, maybe somehow Renee got in, you know? Maybe now he can take some corporeal form or... Or reach out like this, you know, instead of just in her dreams. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's creepy. Yeah, I don't think Renee's going to have anything to do with it. No? Mm -mm. No, I I really don't. I think this is an entirely new something, something going to happen. And I think, I I don't know, it could be that it's, they're threatening, they're going to threaten to take the baby. And I don't know what they're going to do, but it seems to me like Arlene has to pay a price for what she did, for what she did that night. So I'm thinking that's the direction it's going to go in. So instead of baby not yours, as in Terry's not the father, maybe the statement's directed at at Arlene saying you don't get to keep that baby? Yeah. Oh, interesting. that's, That's what I'm thinking it is. Interesting. So, and judging by Arlene's reaction to it, in in the little video clip, mm-hmm. I don't know. Might might be something that she's been afraid might happen. Her worst fears coming to light. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well, we also have a spoiler from Watch with Kristen over at E Online, who tells us that they are building the set or or um, dressing the set uh, to be in the forest. Someone will be in the woods for a scene that involves a lot of deer carcasses. So, hmm, either there's some sort of shifter thing going on here. I don't know. Maybe it's right after the full moon, and this is the aftermath. Oh. I don't oh, know. That, that, see, now that could involve shifter or wear. Werewolf. Right. Yeah, either way. You know, it or could be. it could be a, a vampire who doesn't want to eat humans and got really hungry. I don't know. I don't know. No. I don't know. Pretty interesting, though. Pretty interesting stuff. And do check out the um, inside HBO inside the inside the blog, where they keep coming up with they they feed us these little little nuggets every once in a while. You never know what you're going to find over there. Yeah, they have some really cool, very a lot of variety. They're they're highlighting some things behind the scenes, and then I mean, you know what different jobs are. Um, different people that have these jobs and what their career aspirations are, and then they'll do something completely off the wall, like here are three crosses we were trying to decide. You know, Alan needed to decide which one to use in this scene. Which one would you choose? <laughs> like, yeah, wow. that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to be looking to see. That would have been around. Well, you know, we don't actually know which episode that would have been for. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm guessing it had something to do with the priest. Uh, you know, the flashbacks to the Inquisition kind of stuff. Oh, yes, because they did look medieval. Mm-hmm. They did. So, maybe. Hmm. That's my guess. Could be Fellowship of the Sun coming in with their their craziness. Oh, it could too. be. Could be. That. Inside-true-blood, right? I think so. Inside-true-blood.com. Yeah. Not to be confused with true-blood.net. <laughs> Everybody wants to be like us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap up for the week. And we want to thank you all for joining us. Our show is written and produced by Mel and myself. Music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. This podcast is copyright true-blood.net. All rights are reserved. True-blood.net is not affiliated with HBO or the cast and crew of True Blood. Be sure to bookmark true-blood.net and watch for next week's podcast on Thursday where we'll be talking about the latest news, whatever spoilers come up, and anything else you want to throw at us. 
That's right. We want to thank Jace Everett for joining us this week and wish him all the best with the new album release. And we also want to thank our editor, Hunter, for doing such a fine job on the podcast. I think we gave him a little bit of a challenge this week. <laughs> Um, as always, you can subscribe to our uh, podcast, the audio version, at iTunes. Just search for true-blood.net, and you will get automatically updated whenever a new episode comes out. If you have questions or comments, send them to us at webmaster at true-blood.net. And we'll see you next week, Trubies. Bye-bye.